Hello, my name is Professor Craig Ritchie and I'm the CEO and founder of Scottish Brain Sciences. First of all, I'd like to thank you for participating in one of the studies run by Scottish Brain Sciences. Many of the studies we run at Scottish Brain Sciences involve testing for proteins in the brain called amyloid and tau. This short video will explain more about these proteins and the impact they may have on your brain health. Amyloid, sometimes also described as amyloid beta, is a protein that builds up outside nerve cells. This happens to a certain extent to everybody as we get older, but it is considered to be an early step in the development of Alzheimer's dementia. Tau protein is present inside nerve cells and performs a very important function in maintaining nerve cells health. We can test for amyloid and tau in one of three ways. The first is a special type of brain scan called a PET scan. This involves the injection of a radio-labeled ligand of the amyloid protein or the tau protein. Ligand simply means to bind or to join onto, and these radio-labeled ligands will go through the bloodstream and into the brain. If the amyloid or tau protein is present in the brain, then the specific ligands will bind to this protein and therefore not be washed out of the brain, as would be the case if these two proteins weren't present. As these ligands bind to the protein inside the brain, they continue to emit radioactivity, which can be picked up by the PET scanner. The second way of checking for amyloid and tau is by testing a sample of spinal fluid for traces of the two proteins. Cerebrospinal fluid, also called CSF, flows around the brain and into the spinal cord. And therefore, if the proteins are present in the brain, they'll be detectable in fluid samples. The third mechanism for assessing amyloid and tau is the most novel and cutting edge, and that is to look for markers of these proteins in the blood with a simple blood test. Both PET imaging and CSF testing are validated, reliable, and available within most healthcare systems. But they're difficult to access, expensive, and not suitable for everybody, depending on their medical history or medications that you may be taking. The use of blood testing for amyloid and tau is still in development, but we expect that these tests will become available within the NHS and other healthcare systems across the UK. When you have a test for amyloid or tau for one of the studies that Scottish Brain Sciences is undertaking, it's important to fully understand what the implications of your results are. Let's consider amyloid first. As mentioned earlier, amyloid is a protein that builds up outside the nerve cell and does so as we age. Research has shown us that in people who may go on to develop Alzheimer's dementia, the amount of amyloid that builds up is greater than we'd expect in normal aging. This is possible because the protein that forms the aggregate of amyloid in the plaque has a smaller protein within it called amyloid beta. All through life, we produce amyloid beta in our brain, but normally this is a short 17 amino acid long protein that is soluble and therefore easily cleared from the brain of individuals and throughout life. In later life, and more so in people who may develop Alzheimer's dementia, the amyloid beta protein is longer. It's 42 amino acids long rather than instead of 17, which makes it insoluble and more difficult to clear. Because it doesn't clear so easily, amongst other reasons, it joins together into clumps and these are the clumps that we see in the amyloid plaque, which is visible on the PET scan. It's worth considering that amyloid itself is a risk factor for other changes in the brain that lead to symptoms. We can compare the presence of amyloid in the brain, like elevated cholesterol or high blood pressure. Elevated cholesterol and high blood pressure in their own right are painless, and people don't necessarily have symptoms because of them. However, Having untreated high blood pressure or untreated high cholesterol is a risk factor for developing heart disease and stroke. In many ways, the elevation of amyloid could be considered similar to this, whereby if left untreated, there's a higher risk of symptoms emerging that may lead to the changes in day-to-day -day functioning that characterizes a dementia syndrome. Many of the therapies that are being developed are anti-amyloid therapies, which work on the hypothesis that if you clear amyloid in the brains of individuals at risk, then it may be possible to reduce the likelihood of them developing dementia in the future.
It's important to realize that one cannot develop Alzheimer's dementia without amyloid being present. However, the presence of amyloid does not necessarily mean you will develop a dementia syndrome. The next protein to consider is tau. This is a protein that sits inside the nerve cells and usually binds to another protein called tubulin. Tubulin is a protein that forms an internal scaffold or a skeleton within a nerve cell, which helps it to maintain its shape and to also move nutrients and waste products through the nerve cell to help it function normally. In people with Alzheimer's disease and in other neurodegenerative conditions, the tau protein becomes what we call hyperphosphorylated. When this happens, the tau protein comes away from the tubulin and the tubulin stops functioning so well. As a consequence, the nerve cell starts to function less well and symptoms manifest. It's generally considered that the buildup of tau and its removal from the binding site on tubulin is what drives symptoms of neurodegenerative disease. Medicines are also being developed to try and address this buildup of tau so that even if amyloid is present, the damage driven by tau does not occur. When we test for amyloid and tau in any of the studies run by Scottish Brain Sciences, one of the doctors will talk to you before the test about what the results may mean for you. They will also speak to you after the test result is back to discuss the implications of the test result. What we know is that these tests can convey much more information when they're negative than when they're positive. We refer to these tests as having what's known as higher sensitivity than they have specificity. This means that a negative test helps to rule out disease with greater accuracy than a positive test rules in disease. So if the test comes back as negative, it allows the doctors and clinicians at Scottish Brain Sciences, as well as, well as any other healthcare providers you may be seeing, to move forward with assessment and management of any issues that you may have in the knowledge it is unlikely that Alzheimer's disease is having a major impact on your brain health at this time. These tests are only able to give us a picture of your brain at the time we do the test, and the test results may change in the future. If you require any further information, the medical and clinical teams at Scottish Brain Sciences are always delighted to hear from you. Once again, I'd like to thank you for your participation in the clinical search we're doing at Scottish Brain Sciences. We hope and expect that the knowledge that we gain through your participation will make a huge difference to current and future generations and will help to develop better, more accurate tests, more efficient and effective interventions to ultimately prevent dementia.